Hello, uh, my name's Di Roberts and welcome to our third open event. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more people to join before, before I start. Um, I hope that uh, you really find today useful. Uh, it's not easy when we're doing things virtually, but we're really trying to give you a flavour of what life is really like at Brock. So I think I'll start. So um, again, welcome. Uh, this is the Q&A session with our students. We were going to do it live, but given the national restrictions, we didn't think it was in the spirit to ask them to come in specially on a Saturday. So they interviewed me uh, earlier in the week and we recorded it and I've asked them some questions as well. And I really hope it will give you an idea of what life is like at Brock. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, I hope you have a really good rest of, um, rest of the day. Thank you. Hello, as you know, I'm Di, Di Roberts, Principal at Brock, and I'm being interviewed by two of our second year students. So, would you please introduce yourself? Yep, so, um, hi, my name's Ben Watton, I'm a second year student, and I'm doing A-levels in History, Biology and Chemistry. Thank you, Finn. And I'm Sarah Allport, and I'm also a second year student, and I'm doing A-levels in Biology, Geography and Classical Civilization. Thank you, Sarah. So, let's start the interview. Be gentle. <laughs> Who's going first? Uh, it's me first. Okay. okay. So, what do you think makes Brock special? Oh, big question. Um, <laughs> I think perhaps the most important thing is how everybody cares at Brock. Um, the teachers really care about every single student. The student services um, staff, the professional services staff, really care about supporting our students. The um, student support managers that you have, they really care. But I think what I'm most proud of is that all of our students care. So they really care about each other. Um, they have a lot of respect for each other. Um, and they're very proud to be a Brock student, which I think is very special. Um, I think what is also very special is we're a very inclusive college. So we have students who will come to us from a whole range of backgrounds, from a whole range of abilities. So students will come to us who are high flyers, like you and Finn. Um, students will come who um, maybe are the first in their family to go to university. Students who really want to focus um, in their vocational programme um, because they want to have that direct experience of business, of industry, of commerce. We have students who will come to us with learning differences, students who will come to us with um, education and health and care plans. So we actually have over 150 students who have education and health um, and care plans who are at the college. And I think the breadth of the curriculum that we have really ensures that every single student in the area is able to find a course at Brock that is tailored for them. So we have probably the widest um, range of courses of any college in our locality. So we have over 40 A-levels, we have vocational programmes at all levels, we offer apprenticeships for our students. So there is a course um, that is really just right for everyone who applies. Um, and I think that inclusivity is really what makes Brock um, special. But I'm going to turn the tables, I'm going to ask you both. <laughs> so what, what, what do you think? What, what do you think makes Brock so special? Um, so I was saying that, um, so last year I did the open events with you as well, so talking in front of any prospective students. And you always finish with the line, we care. I think that's what the most important thing is. You can see it, it's evident in all aspects of learning. Um, the fact that everyone's got a vested interest in the students doing well and making the most of their potential. So whether you're a student or a teacher, you want to see those students get success. And you can see that in every aspect as well. Thank you, Finn. So, yeah, it is it's that, that personal relationship that you get with your, with your teacher. I mean, you, you develop a bond that means you know that you're part of a team. So it's you and the teacher, and you are definitely in it together, and they do care about your end result, and they are with you through all of your aspirations, all of your interviews, all of your 
uh, applications, everything. You're, you're doing it together. Well, that's lovely. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. So, okay, next question. Yeah, so um, what would you say is Brock's approach to learning? Okay, well, I, I think there are sort of two aspects to this. Uh, the first is our teachers. Um, I know you'll agree, we have wonderful teachers here, but the, the experience, the expertise and the knowledge that they have, they are specialists. So uh, they, if they're academic teachers, they will have, um, they'll be teaching their first degree, they may have masters, some will have doctorates. Therefore, if they're teaching chemistry, that's all they're teaching. They're not teaching a range of sciences. So that level of expertise, that level of knowledge, that level of passion for their subject is really a bedrock. Uh, our vocational teachers are all qualified teachers, but they have that real life experience out there in business, in industry, in commerce, and they bring that into their teaching. And indeed, they have such wonderful contacts um, that they still have that they use to the benefit of their students. So I think that absolute expertise of our students, of, of our teachers, is a real strength. Um, and the second thing is our holistic growth mindset program, um, which is called VESPA, uh, as you know. Um, the V is for vision, the E is for effort, S is for systems, P for practice, and A for attitude. So, as a student who's gone through that program, what does what does that mean to you? Yeah, so I think in general, um, it's good that it is a holistic approach. It's all encompassing. Uh, you can see it in every every aspect of the learning, and the teachers definitely reinforce it. Um, so they've got V for vision, as as we touched on previously. Uh, everyone's got the same vision for their students to to make the most of their their ultimate potential. Um, then you've got E for effort, and that's quite a, a logical thing. So the more effort you put into your work, the more you're going to get out of it, and that's that's representative for a lot of things in life. Um, then you've got S for systems, and I think they're reinforced a lot. Um, ever since you, you come to the college from the first year. Um, you need to have the right techniques and the right approaches to your learning in every subject, and that's how you're going to be able to carry out all your learning up until your exams. Um, P for practice, which as we all know, practice makes perfect, that's a very simple one um, to understand. And then perhaps most importantly is the final one, the attitude. Um, as you said, if you've got a growth mindset, you can um, learn upon any mistakes you made um, previously in education, kind of develop into a more rounded person. Um, as opposed to having a fixed mindset and just staying at the same level throughout as well. Mm, thank you. How do you look after your students at work? Carefully. <laughs> um, I, I, I think we've, we've already touched on um, you know, the fact that every single person here cares for our students. So you have, as you described, you have that, that individual time with your own teachers. You have that one-to-one -one support that's available all the time. You have um, your weekly meetings with your student support manager, your SSM, um, and they're there to remove any barriers. So they're there to um, make sure that nothing gets in the way of your studies. They're there to, in effect, hold your hand. Um, but we have uh, a wider wraparound support as well. So for instance, a lot of students um, uh, are very anxious. And so we have an intensive support team, we have an emotional support officer, and we have a team of counsellors. So that if you need to um, have some support with anxiety, it's there and it's there for you straight away. We have our skills development team. Um, they're there to help if you have any learning difference, differences. So if you uh, have dyslexia or dyscalculia, they can support you and help you to develop strategies. But they're also there if you need some, um, just a small amount of help with study skills. Yeah. You know, you're going through a bit of a difficult patch and you want to you know, really uh, reinforce the work that you're doing about your systems and practice. Uh, and we have our professional services team are there around financial support, financial support and assistance, um, transport. So it's, it's, it's very much there to make sure that you as a student are able to be as successful as possible and we can remove any barriers and give you the support that you need on that journey through Brock. Cool. So, um, as you mentioned, we've got a wide range of ability levels at the college. 
and there's something to cater to all of them. But how specifically do you cater to the higher end achievers? Okay, so we have um, uh, uh, an academy system. So we have four academies in the college. Um, the, the first one is we have our music and performing arts academy and that is there to provide the range of opportunities for our students who want to excel in the areas of music and performing arts and by giving them the opportunity to perform so whether that's in concerts whether that's in small groups whether that's um, you know modern music or um, pop music or whatever the latest um, <laughs> hip-hop street type music is um, but they also have um, the opportunity to have one-to-one -one support for uh, learning their instruments um, we have uh, opportunities for performances whether that is Shakespeare, whether that is through to musical, musical theatre or, um, or to general theatre because uh, our students need to have that experience and confidence in performing live and even in these, um, these challenging times we're still doing that and the students are live streaming those performances. So that's our Music and Performing Arts Academy. We have a STEM Academy um, which is for students who want to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering or maths including IT and that gives a range of experiences, visits, um, programs to help those students gain the experience and be inspired to go and work in the in the STEM industries and we have an annual STEM awards um, competition that is sponsored by local STEM businesses um, which recognizes right across all of those areas um, progress and performance of students during the year um, we have our Sports Academy, which is there to uh, support our students to perform at the highest level that they can. So um, whether their sport is football or hockey or rugby or basketball or netball, they will be given the opportunity to compete um, in the league, the local league, uh, in, at county level, um, nationally and indeed some of our students go on to compete internationally. And as part of that we have, uh, we're part of the TAFS programme which is there to support our elite athletes. And then we have our Aspire Academy, which I think you're both in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to ask you, so what, what, what have you experienced as being part of the Aspire Academy? Yeah, so the Aspire Academy um, is for our gifted and talented students and uh, making, wanting to make a competitive application to stuff like Russell Creek University, Oxford, Cambridge, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, they've definitely helped me um, a lot most recently as well because I'm undergoing applications at the University of Oxford. Um, so I've had to do uh, admissions tests, personal statement, and then fingers crossed an interview. <laughs> Hopefully so. And yeah, they've helped me with everything, all those aspects as well. We've got a an interview workshop just tomorrow as well. Um, so you've got stuff like that. And then ever since the start of the first year, we've also got HE Plus, which is a, um, a scheme in collaboration with the University of Cambridge as well. Um, and they give you kind of um, lectures based on your subject that you want to go into, so you can get a rough idea of learning the university. I think that's generally kind of maybe quite exciting to the future because mm -hmm. I do have that, that base level of understanding of what's expected of me and I can build upon it as well. Okay. And Sarah? Um, so we also have talks that are um, uh, given just to the Aspire students particularly about sort of university life and, and uh, how to create a competitive application. So we've had Oxford students come and speak to us as Aspire students um, we have talks about student financing, we have talks about how to organise yourself, organise your vision, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so they are very uh, organised and, and practical in terms of what you need to know mm. for creating an application and going to university. And of course you're there, you can, su you can support each other in your applications yeah. as well, be, be, being in that, that, that high achieving group. Mm. Okay. So next question. So what's it? Yes. So, what is the campus and the facilities of the campus like? Um, 
very big. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have 36 acres um, of wonderful green playing fields and lawns. Um, it's very much like a university type campus. And of course, we are so lucky to be in the, the, the absolute heart of the new forest. So it's very peaceful. I think it's very conducive to having that calm atmosphere um, for study. And um, it's also really quite quirky when you go into the village and you know you have the, the horses and the donkeys all sort of going into Tesco's. Um, but I, um, I think having that sense of space, having that, um, that air of calmness, that greenness, really does help um, our students and of course um, our staff as well. And uh, as I've said, the 36 acres, so we have huge sports fields, um, we have a fully equipped gym, um, large sports hall, astroturfs, <laughs> Uh, so, in, in, in terms of that, you know, those facilities are absolutely wonderful. Um, we have the STEM Centre, which is where we are at the moment. This is the IBM room, and this is used mainly by our students uh, studying maths, but also our students studying IT and engineering, and students who are studying media because it's um, it's incredibly well equipped. As is our Beacon Technology Centre. So we have um, the uh, fully equipped TV studios, uh, recording studios. We have, I think, the largest number of Apple Mac, um, probably in any college um, that I know of. Uh, we have our engineering department that are in there, our fully equipped um, kitchens and restaurants. So we have an on-site restaurant that our students, um, our students learn how to be absolute brilliant chefs and front of house staff. Uh, we have our Marchwood Skill Centre which is our marine and construction centre. Um, again, really brilliant facilities there. Uh, we have um, a programme of building work that's just uh, going to take place very shortly and we hope will be completed by Easter. Certainly completed by the time anybody um, joins us in September and we're having our, all of our uh, science labs um, completely rebuilt. So they will be state of the art um, for everybody, which I think will be really lovely, and will match really the, the you know the the rest of the high quality um, provision that we have uh, right across the college. So yes, it's um, it's 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 very much at the forefront of twenty first century um, learning, but because of our location, it also has that really lovely. Um, university style campus feel as well. So, any more questions? I think I'm going to ask you a few questions as well. Yeah. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> um, okay, so when did you choose Brock? I think it's the ultimate question, really. Why did you choose Brock? Um, <laughs> oh, there's a load of them, a load of reasons. Um, I think you just touched on it as well. Um, the location, I did really want a We've got a college where it's got the state-of-the-art technology, but it's in a very rural area, and I think that's great. Um, being able to being able to go out into the village as well, um, get some food, stuff like that. I um, think also the fact that we said it right at the start, but it's the it's the feel you get immediately. So the people the people that are watching as well, hopefully you understand that um, just from watching these events, we do care, and you. It seems that the college came to me as a student, other than me having to go to the college to look at them. So it immediately said to me that they wanted me to be there and they wanted me to make the most of my potential there, mm. as opposed to anywhere else. And I think that's the most important thing. There's, you know, they seem invested in you even before you are a student, and obviously that carries on yeah. even more so when you do. Yeah. So, why did you choose Bob? I think for me there were two sort of main thing. So obviously, as you mentioned before, the wide range of courses. Mm. So classical civilization, I, I thought was brilliant and wasn't often <laughs> anywhere I could find anyway. Um, and the second thing was probably that level of ownership, that level of independence that you're given and responsibility for your um, for your learning, which I see as kind of like a stepping stone to university, mm. because obviously it's quite different 
um, or my, I have uh, siblings that have been to Brock before, so my older brother is now at York studying natural science, and my older sister is now at Oxford studying English literature and French. And I know that both of them have definitely found that their ability, their organisation, their independence, their responsibility for their own learning that they've developed whilst being at Brock has definitely helped them in terms of dealing with their university work and adapting to that university mm. environment. So I think that was key for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, what extra activities have you taken um, alongside your studies? Um, so, I think, um, as Sarah will go on to say about the student union as well, which she plays a key role in. Um, so, I'm a student ambassador, which is another element where you can see that the college is very student led, and they definitely have a say in what, what goes on. So, as a student ambassador, um, you're taking part in the open events, you're helping out stuff like that. Um, induction, which happened a couple of months ago for the new students coming in. Um, yeah, it just gives another opportunity to kind of give back to the college that are giving you the education as well. Mm. Um, as we said as well, the Aspire um, program that's been instrumental in everything I do at the college. Yeah. Um, moving on to that next step as well. So yeah. yeah, there's definitely a lot to get involved with, as well as yeah, the wide range of enrichments we've got um, that people can find online. So they can just take up another hobby as well, whether that's a sporting one like five side football or something a bit more niche like um, robotics. Like mm. Thank you. And as a um, as student <laughs> governor and SU president, yes? Yeah, yeah. so um, obviously being involved with the Student Union has been incredible for me because it does show how much Brock wants the students to have, you know, to play a key role in, in what life is like. They want to hear your opinions. I mean, the fact that they let um, <laughs> one of their students be a governor, sit on the governing body, be involved in those decisions, <laughs> is fantastic and a, and a real testament to how much they care about us as students and our opinions. Mm -hmm. And obviously you've got academic um, uh, things that you can do as well, like we both did the biology and yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah. that's obviously something that you can get involved in. So there are those enrichments, those sort of quirky uh, things that make Brock so creative and interesting. But and, there's also... And, and you can set up your own enrichments as well. Yes, yeah. Um, the environment in Richmond that we're yeah. trying to set up. So yeah. it is absolutely you have a role and if, when you're at Brock they, they do care what you think, which yeah. is really nice. So what advice would you give to prospective students looking to apply to Brock? Um, I think it's you know, hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, from the first year, you're not here for very long, you're here for two years, yeah. um, which is shorter than university and way shorter than school as well. Um, so yeah, you need to, as we said with Vespa, get those systems in, right from the start, break any old habits that you want mm -hmm. broken, and um, start afresh, and then that's how you can really succeed, so you know. And also invest in what has been given to you as well, because mm -hmm. we've just um, given a whole wealth of things, a lot of activities that you can get involved in. I really do recommend getting involved in them, because that's how you can make the most of with this experience as well. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's probably the key point, is just make the most of your time. There are so many things you can do, and as we just said, we're not here for very long. So it is, you know, you're given so many opportunities. Grab them with both hands because they are fantastic when you do. Um, and you know, yeah, I think just just make the most of it and, and structure yourself. So organise your time. Yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, I think you can see why I am so very proud of our students, but it's been, it's been a really uh, lovely experience being interviewed by you. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.